On this episode of Dish and Dirt, we are out at the Cadron Crest Peach Orchard. The kids from City of Hope are actually helping us pick fresh peaches so that we can go turn that into peach jam. So let's dig in. Melanie, thanks so much for being with us today. I'm excited. We literally just got out of the peach orchard. It's a little warm today. Um, so thanks for coming back to the extension office with us and showing us how to make peach jam. So walk us through how we get from these lovely peaches that our City of Hope kids just helped us pick to this peach jam that looks yummy to eat. Okay, well, Cami, we're actually going to make peach preserves, but jam and preserves are closely related. So we'll, we may talk about that in a little bit. We're going to start with our fresh peaches. Of course, we've washed them, got them ready to, to go, and then we're going to just simply peel all of our peaches. Now, there are lots of methods that you can use in doing this. Some people like to scald their peaches in hot water. We prefer to just take the time to make sure we're getting that peel off nice and easy, and it keeps our peaches really fresh. So we're gonna peel that. Once we have our peaches all nice and peeled, they're gonna look like this. And so we'll take them and we'll just slice them in half, pop the seed out. If you'd like to see the seed, I can cut this one. Up. That would be great, yeah. It comes out pretty easily when um, it's fresh, fresh. and um, ripe. So and just pop that out. And when we picked it off the tree, it's super, super fresh. It's most delicious. Okay, so once we have them in, in this form, we've halved all of our peaches, we're gonna take it just a step further and we're gonna cut them up. You can go ahead and process them at that time in a food processor or a blender. And depending on if you're making, like I said, preserves or jams or jellies out of it, that's gonna determine what process you're gonna do. So today, for simplicity, we're gonna go with preserves. That just gives us a little thicker consistency here. So we're gonna take, um, our peaches that we already have kind of diced up and mix them in here with some that we've already blended in, okay? And we need four cups of peaches in okay. order to make, our, um, to make our preserves that we're doing today. So I'm gonna give you this spoon if you wanna stir that around for me a little yes, bit I just sure to get will. it mixed in really well. So after we have this mixture, then we're gonna add to it okay. our um, seven cups of sugar. So you can go ahead and add seven cups okay. of sugar there. Okay, so Kami, now that we have our seven cups of sugar added in, we're gonna mix that in real well. The next thing we need is something that's going to allow our preserves to um, give it some stability and to thicken. Okay. And so for that, we use a pectin. And there are lots of different kinds of pectins, and I have several here today. This one is a low or no sugar pectin, so someone who may be diabetic or who's just trying to watch their sugar, they could use this pectin. Okay. There's also the classic pectin that's there, and then there's one, if you were gonna make a freezer jam, that's a jam pectin for the freezer, so it specifically has directions for you to use. So there are lots of products on the market that you would use for that. Fantastic. Then we also want to add in um, just two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay. So we'll measure those out for you. And the lemon juice, what it's going to do, it's gonna help us for one, preserve our color in. Um, Cause it's a pretty color right It now. is a beautiful color and we wanna keep that. Um, and it's also gonna help with the acidity. So just give us the right amount of acid that we need. Next, we're gonna take our um, 
bowl. We're going to put it into a pot and we're going to put it, cook it on um, on our stove till it gets a nice boil to it. Once okay. we have it boiling, that usually takes about 10 minutes or so. Then we're going to move over to our jars. Okay. Now, we can't just use any jars when we're making, um, when we're doing some type of food preservation. We want to make sure that we're using food grade jars that are specifically for canning or preserving. And so that's what we have with us today. We've taken all of our jars and we've made sure that they've been sterilized. So we usually do that by just boiling them for a few minutes in some hot water. Taking them out, we want to make sure that they're really clean, um, that there's not any spots or debris in them. And so I can boil these in the same hot water no. that I water bath in? We want to boil them in a different batch of water. Just checking. Okay. The next thing we want to check for is our lids. And um, contrary to maybe what grandma has taught you in the past, we want to make sure that we always use a fresh lid. We want to check the seal around it. And lids do have a tendency to expire. So if you buy a box from the store, you want to make sure, check that expiration date, make sure that that seal is nice and gummy, that it hasn't dried. Okay. And if you've kept them from year to year, they may harden. So we've got our nice clean lids. We also want to sterilize those as well. And our rings. Now rings you can reuse. Okay. So some people want to buy fresh new ones. That's what I tend to do. Um, but if you are reusing a ring, you want to make sure that it's dent free, that it's rust free, and then you're good to go on that. Okay. So after you have everything sterilized and it's all ready to go, then we're going to ladle up our um, preserves into our jars. Okay. And our jars are hot at this time, so we want to be really careful with that. We can use our jar handler to help us with that. So if you want to just ladle. Okay. And I use this fancy little gadget so I don't oh, spill. Yes, and this will keep also the ring around the outside of the jar free of debris so that when um, you go to make a seal, you'll have a good tight seal. And how do I know how full to fill the jar? Okay, it, it will depend on what you're making on, um, but a half inch headspace is a general space. And they make a nice little tool now. Grandma used to have to just kind of guess what a half inch was, but we can actually measure that. And we can tell you've done this probably before because you're right on the money. So, Good deal. Okay. After we do that, we're going to take our nice hot jar. And if we were doing this in our kitchen where it was really hot, we would um, probably use something to put that on there to keep our fingers from burning. And we're going to screw this. We don't want it too tight, but we want a good, nice tightness. So you don't have to squeeze it to death or okay. anything like that. Because our jars are hot, we're going to again take our jar handler. We're going to stick it over into our nice hot water. And this is called a water bath? This process? is a water bath. And for our jams and jellies, you, water bath is sufficient. There are products that um, people choose to can at home that they need to use a pressure canner. And if they need information on what is safe to water bath and what needs to be pressure canned, they can contact the extension office and we'll awesome. be glad to direct them Fabulous. what they need to do. You wanna make sure that all of, after you've done all of your jars, that you have about one to two inches of water over your uh, lids, okay? So that as the water starts to boil, it has plenty of room to move over the tops of the jars. After you do this, you're gonna let it get to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, you're going to close your lid and you're going to process it for 10 minutes. Okay, dope. So we're going to let that process. After it is processed, remember again, we're working with hot, so hot. kitchen tools. So we're going to remove our lid. We'll take our jars out very carefully because again, they're going to be really hot set them out and the next thing we want to do is make sure that we don't have any water on sitting on our lids and so we don't want to mash the lid so if you just want to take a paper towel you can just soak up that water that may be sitting on there because they're hot a lot of that water will just evaporate okay. and you don't really have to worry about it you want to let your jar sit okay if you touch them you could disturb the product and not get a good seal so the way we know it's sealed is there will be an indention usually we hear a loud little pop and for people who process food in their home kitchens that's like a glorious sound to yes. hear them um, hear their cans pop but that's all it is to making your own peach preserves fabulous 
So I have one more question for you. Okay. Can you tell us what the difference between jelly, jam, and preserves is? Okay. So a jelly is going to be when you're going to remove actually the fruit product. You're taking the juice of that product. And peach jelly is not going to be as clear as maybe apple jelly because you're going to have a little bit of the fruit that's going to just come through that. Um, your preserves are going to be a little bit um, thicker, have um, pieces, actual pieces of the fruit. And a jam is going to have the actual pieces of the fruit, but it's going to be really thick and they're going to be pureed. Very so. good. So again, um, very neat that we got to go with our students at Coho to pick peaches and then we've actually made peach preserves with those peaches from the orchard. So if we have more questions, how do we contact you? Hey, you can contact our office. 329-8344 um, is our phone number, or you can email us um, at our office, and um, we'll be glad to answer any of your questions. We have handouts, lots of fact sheets. Um, I have one that yes. I brought with me today on peaches. We have recipes other than making jams and jellies, but fresh peach salsa, um, peach cobblers, things like that. Too. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Dishing Dirt. We're excited that we now have peach jam from our peaches that the Coho students picked at Cadron Crest Orchard. And we want to thank Melanie Malone with the Extension Office for making us this wonderful peach jam. See y'all next time.